Help. I don't read I don't want to read this book. Ever since my teacher said I was a reluctant reader, I have spent every waking minute avoiding my mother and her latest idea of how I should use my time. Waste my time is more like it. The librarian said you'd love this book. Mom vaults over a basket of laundry, but I'm too fast for her. I dive out my bedroom window onto the roof of the garage. One chocolate chip per page, she calls. That's the old rate. My price has gone up. As soon as my mother starts to climb out after me, I hoist myself through the open attic window. A few minutes later, I hear her at the bottom of the attic stairs. Two chocolate chips per page, but that's as high as I'll go, Derek. While my mother tries to bribe me down from the attic for chocolate, I rummage through the cardboard boxes to see if there's a stick I can use to shoot my way out. Instead, I find a stack of letters my father wrote to my mother when they were dating. Yuck. And some old newspapers. When I open one of them up, the headline reads, Local girl found dead on beach. The newspaper is from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, and dated 10 years ago. I have to do the math and the dust with my finger. I open the attic trap door and hang down by my feet. I'm facing my mother upside down again like Peter Parker and Mary Jane in the first Spider-Man movie, except we don't kiss, obviously. I asked Mother about a dead 17-year-old girl on an island where we've never been to, but she doesn't know what I'm talking about, so I toss down the newspaper. When she picks it up, her expression changes. This has nothing to do with you, she says. No kidding, I answer. I just want to know why we have it. She yanks me down by the wasteland of my jeans and catches me before I hit the floor. Instead of making up a story, you're going to read one. She tucks the newspaper article into her back pocket, then shoves the library book into my hands. The thing is, I like to read. If everyone just left me alone with Kelvin Hobbs, Garfield, Bucky, and Satchel, I could read all day. But forcing a kid to do something as private as reading? My, my teacher, my mother, and the reading tutor, a nice name, woman named Satan, came up with a new reading system for me this year. They had me keep a list of all the vocabulary words I didn't know. Because I like to draw, my father is a professional illustrator, I took their idea and made it my own. So instead of writing the vocabulary words, now I draw them. Anything to get out of reading. My parents insist I use the system all the time, so I usually pretend I'm a spy being tortured by super evildoers who force me to practice active reading or be killed by a foreign assassin. But if everyone thinks I'm spending my summer doing this, they are wrong, wrong, wrong. If my life were a book, I'd have my own cool adventures instead of reading about someone else's. If I were the main character in an exciting story rather than some kid who has to sit around and read all day, I'd spend the summer trying to find out how the girl in the newspaper ended up dead. Torture in the Classroom the next morning, Miss Williams picks up where my mother left off. She passes out the summer reading list, wearing a demented smile and acting as if she's tossing out free candy. I pretend to smash my head on my desk. Miss Williams ignores me. You'll read three books from this list and write a report on one of them. The way our principal shifted assignments next year... I'm happy to say I'll be your teacher again in September. I swear I'm not a troublemaker, but it's like an alien life form has landed on the classroom wielding assault weapons in each hand. Somebody has to stop the madness. Are you saying we have you again next year and we have a report due on the first day of school? I ask that's a reading and writing homework for the summer. It's just not doable on my schedule. My friend Matt thinks this is funny, but I know he'll enjoy the show from the sidelines without backing me up. The teacher's voice has the same weary tone as my mother's. Please, tell us about all these summer activities I can't wait to hear. That's the whole thing, I say. You can't plan when you're going to pelt the UPS truck with water balloons or when you'll dig up worms and put them in Mr. Parker's meal slot. Or when you'll dip your action figures in paint and flick them at your friend with a lacrosse stick until you're both covered in painty stripes. Summer is like a pajama and cereal day. If you try to plan it out ahead of time, you wreck it. Matt waves his fists in the air as if he's the one giving Miss Williams a hard time. 
The teacher places the reading list squarely in front of me. I'm afraid you'll have to try and fit the three of these books during all that fun. I like Miss Williams, but I wouldn't complain if she was kidnapped by crazed bank robbers in need of a getaway car. The reading list, unfortunately, isn't going anywhere either. I stared at it and wonder, and wonder what I've got myself into. One of the books is about a kid and his dog over summer vacation and all the exciting things they do together and the lessons the boy learns. I have a dog and, trust me, that stuff only happens in books.